Hop in, Nate. We're gonna go get this flag. No foot. We're getting this motherfucker. God damn. Shit. I knew it was gonna happen. <laughs> knew it was gonna happen because I knew he had the rockets. <laughs> A lot of Johns today. A lot of Johns. But hey, it's Christmas. Yeah, I'm I'm happy it's Christmas time and all that. But at the same time, I'm also really happy that ERB came back with some stuff. And now JonTron is here and he's putting out a video. Uh, I know there's going to be people out there asking us to still react to his Christmas with the Cranks video. And whenever we have a recording day... I will make that a point to do that, but for now, I think this is this is basically it, guys. This is all this is all the John Tron you're getting for now. <laughs> yeah, so I'm excited. I want to see what John's gonna get into, but I guess uh, you know, uh, you know, we've waited long enough. I know y'all have waited long enough. I want to know what the hell the devil and Father Amorth is. Also, I've heard a lot of people say this is really really good. This was very heavily recommended on our Discord and on YouTube by a bunch of people in our comment section. So I guess, here we go. Good tidings, good people. Before we raise the curtain on the amazing video that we've got in store for you today, I'd just like to thank today's sponsor, Lords Mobile. Without Lords Mobile, this video would simply not have been possible. And guess what? They're back, baby! This time around, they've got $10,000 worth of iPhone 13 Pros and Amazon gift cards that you can win by downloading Lords Mobile from the link in the description. If you enjoy smashing so armies with a simple tap or annihilating millions of enemies with the okay. help of an alliance, I'll do it right now. then Lords Mobile I'll do it right is no now, doubt John. the best strategy game I'm for you. I'm assuming you have to play it, too. And with hundreds of millions of players, uh, not only can I you I bet you have to play it, too. We'll see. We'll see when I sign up. Genuine lasting friendships within your guild, but you might even meet the love of your life. Never again shall you require to vanquish your foes and drive them from their lands without your sweetie pie by your side. Recently, <laughs> Lords Mobile introduced a massive new update that allows you to go on more adventures throughout Here the kingdom. Go. Each Lords quest Mobile. gives you basic rewards, and the Download. more quests you complete, the better the prizes. And speaking of prizes, the top three players with the highest money will each receive an iPhone 13 Pro. Players in fourth to sixth place Aww. will get a $500 Amazon gift card. Never mind. And those I actually in have seventh to, to tenth place will each take home a $200 Amazon it. gift card. Pretty sweet. And if that weren't enough on its own, everyone who downloads Lords Mobile from the link below will automatically be offered a $350 Lords Mobile gift pack. And you can spin the lucky wheel to win the remaining cash and other prizes to upgrade your castle. So good luck to everyone competing for those epic rewards. Happy hunting. And now, on to our feature presentation. I've got a riddle for you. What do you get if you take the director of world-renowned horror film The Exorcist, a team of Ivy League and internationally recognized physicians, and a once-in-a-lifetime chance to document a real-life exorcism greenlit by the literal Vatican? Seriously. Uh -oh. What do you get from that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's right. You'd get this. The Devil and Father of Morth. A documentary about a real exorcism made by the guy who made the exorcist. Horror fans rejoice. What could be cooler? How could that go wrong? Okay, that sounds like magnum opus material to me. Like, that's going no lower, in my opinion, than like 76% on tomato meter. Absolute lowest I can see it going. This little known film came out in 2017, and as I mentioned before, it was directed by William Friedkin, filmmaker of such legendary titles as yeah. The French Connection, Sorcerer, and as you already know, The Exorcist, also known as the greatest Christmas film of all time. Hence wow. this. <laughs> Didn't miss a Halloween deadline or anything, that'd be crazy. In fact, this film was so much scarier than his past works that the general public was too afraid to even see it. Given that it pulled in a whopping twenty thousand four hundred forty-nine dollars at the box office, if you do the math, you'll see that comes Whoa. down to two thousand two hundred seventy-two adventurous souls who dared to take the plunge. Three of whom were literally my coworkers. Well, I mean, they highly that was a, that was a movie right. film, basically just us in the theater. Okay. They highly dropped this... the ball on advertising for it, apparently, because I didn't hear shit about it. Me neither. Is gonna be something. 
I present that to you the devil box office and Father Amorth. At the time I made the film The Exorcist, I had never seen an exorcism. You might say I was not qualified to make that movie and I just made up the whole thing. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm just thinking this though and not admitting it out loud. More than four decades later, I witnessed the one you were about to see. Listen, I'm in, okay? If it's anything like the fake one you made, th this shit's gonna be ratchet. By the end of this, okay, I'm telling you, you're gonna wish that middle line there, you're gonna wish that said M. Night Shyamalan, okay? That's the kind of mood you're gonna be in by the end of this. Oh my God, really? There are more than 60 million people in Italy. <laughs> Here's about 20 to 25 of them max. So you can already see how big of a problem we're looking at. According to two of the leading newspapers and the major television channel, 500,000 Italians see an exorcist every year. Only takes about eight of them to drag you off Emperor Palpatine. You would subject the human race to 60 million of this? You need 60 million Italians? We have the recipe to spaghetti. This woman is one of them. Her name is Christina. She's 46 years old and lives 200 miles southeast of Rome in a small mountain village. What the fuck, dude? Just because she lives with Count Dracula doesn't mean you can dox her. That's messed up. She's said to be possessed by the devil. Oh my God, the devil, the devil. looks even more ghoulish than I could have imagined. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's the exorcist? Oh, she's fucked. <laughs> Father Gabriella Amort has been the exorcist for the Diocese of Rome for 31,000 years. And somehow he looks older than his age. He was good friends with Emperor <laughs> Justinian the Great. He has wow. exorcised Christina eight times without success. And as the well-known Italian saying goes, the ninth time better fucking work. This will be her ninth. <laughs> In the fall of 1972, I came to Georgetown, here in Washington, D.C., to film The Exorcist. Okay, so in this part, he goes back to Georgetown University, near where a lot of the original scenes from the film were shot, and also where uh, some of the events from The Exorcism it was based on took place. And he kind of just gallivants around aggressively, and it's a, it's a bit strange, to say the least. On this quiet little yeah. street, in this quiet town like... called Cottage City, Maryland. Could you... I was going to say, I've seen documentary, documentary filmmakers try and make a literal film, and it doesn't work. And now I'm witnessing a literal freaking amazing filmmaker make a documentary that just isn't working. <laughs> Could you not have gotten a better picture of the place, for God's sake? Where'd you grab this from? Google Maps? This is the house where the 1949 case began. <laughs> My God, you showed up outside their house like a maniac. $15,000 says they were not informed of this procedure at all. <laughs> Excuse me, I made the movie The Exorcist. Can, may, can I scream outside of your house? No, don't worry, I won't. I will not go past the property line. <laughs> For a Lutheran family whose 14-year-old son was said to be possessed, he was examined by... That man is out there again, Jerry. Who is that man? <laughs> Get the gun. Get the gun. <laughs> this is... I like the, and it was perfect. Yeah, I like the blinds thing. <laughs> that crazy man's out there again. Get the gun. The house at 36th and Prospect in Georgetown that we used as the exterior of the McNeil house in the film. Now, uh, sir, uh, excuse me, uh, who are you? This is private property. Is, is that a camera crew? We had to build sir. a false front. <laughs> sir, excuse me, hello, are you, to are you listening to me? The fence down there to no. bring the house closer to the steps. These Jesus. steps are just a few feet away Yeah, officer, away yeah, yeah, he's still here. He's just like they in my <laughs> stairwell. As the exorcist. The, those steps are actually No, they're the not. Public. They're officially me, known as my the steps. steps Scene. Yeah, they're public. They're public stairs. Yeah, because uh, my uh, sister's ex uh, went there and actually like got pictures on the steps and stuff. So you can go to the steps. The house, on the other hand, the houses, on the other hand, that's. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't try showing up at their houses. Like, it's not a great idea. No, I wouldn't. 
Also, they're officially me, known as my the steps. steps. Explain the scene now. He's going down Lafayette. I don't know. Don't ask me. Okay. Of the Exorcist. The opportunity for me to witness and film an actual exorcism came about 45 years after I had made the film, and completely by accident. Or was it providence? Or was it by accident? Come to think of it, I don't know even what, I don't exactly know what the word providence means. I just saw it, it was on, on that <laughs> wall over there when I look. Oh, that's a map of Providence, Rhode Island. Island yeah. In April of 2016, I came to Rome to interview Father Amort for a magazine. He would allow me to film Christina's ninth exorcism on May 1st, but with no crew, no lights, only a small video camera alone. And I said to him, that's already what I'm running with. Jo so joke's on you. I had no idea hey, I got that camera. what to expect. Probably exorcism. I'm just fucking riffing, though. But before witnessing <laughs> Christina's You're exorcism, right. I met a woman who had been successfully exorcised by Father Amort. I was gonna say, this did, is I gonna say did he get her a treadmill? I mean... That's how you get some exercise right there. Sorry. Your story. Purtroppo soffri di un male spirituale. Eh, mi precipitai da lui preoccupato e eh, quando inizialmente mi chiedo... uh, Excuse me, uh, who is this sliding into frame? Yo, could just like anybody just like get up in on this? Is this like free game? Cuz if so my friend Jack Norman does like a sick Donald Duck impression. It'll be like really Let me bring him in. Yeah, you do this. Yeah. What the fuck, dude? How do you how does he do that? He's he's fucking crazy. I first realized there was something wrong when I went with a friend to a sanctuary. When they began to celebrate the mass, I started having unusual symptoms. Un brutto caso di diarrhea. <laughs> I started screaming like crazy. Someone called the police. The police came, but they wouldn't come in. My God, you could smell the whole thing from the top of St. Peter's Square. There wasn't enough rigatoni in all of Rome that would have convinced me to go in there. They were terrified hearing me scream that way. No, no, no. The screaming was fine. It was the biblical volume of shit that colored my decision. Father Amort continued his work at his residence, the home of the Pauline priests. Oh, look at that. Even the exorcists are working from home these days. Times are a-changing. Espiritu Sante, Sante Maria. Hey, hey, Darcy, no. You do not shit on my new rug. No. Sorry. That was just my daughter. Oh, in fact, she's probably hungry. Well, these are supposed to be for the Holy Communion, but needs must, you know. Go on then. Jesus. Eat up. <laughs> the wafers. Okay, where were we? On May 1st, 2016, he invited me to witness Christina's ninth exorcism. Christina, why are you here to see Father Amort? What the hell is with this angle? Was he trying to make her feel uncomfortable? Who sets up a shot like this, domineering over the person they're interviewing? Okay, this guy is totally normal and on the level. Uh, in no way ever is this the guy who literally gave an interview to The Guardian saying, if I wasn't a director, I might have become a serial killer. Oh no, wait, this is that guy. Yeah. Look at this, this, this is a real article. Oh, I didn't know that. Guardian. Oh yeah. What the fuck? Will Friedkin is a great filmmaker, but a weird dude. And I could honestly say, like, he terrifies me of, mm. of like, how his brain works. William Friedkin interview. If I wasn't a director, I might have become a serial killer. Oh, okay. <laughs> I one time felt the urge to do violence. I still do. Well, I curbed that. After that, she just drops a solid cow. My conscience kicks in, and I'm able to deal with that through the films I do. If I wasn't a film director, I might have become a serial killer. Why a serial killer, she asks, concerned for her safety. Violence uncurbed is dangerous, he adds. You have to channel it. Many of the great painters or composers led very violent and strange lives. Interviewers like, 
Oh, hold on. I dropped my pen. <laughs> Will you sure this isn't a bit of projection on your part? Who are you talking about? I can't think of any violent painters or composers. I don't know. I know one. I know a few actually, but I know one in particular, an Austrian painter who was also a vegetarian, uh, had aspirations of world domination. A man by the name of uh, Adolf Hitler. That's the thing. A lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say, it's just like, I just want to be an artist. And also I'm a vegan or vegetarian. It's just like, you know who else was a vegetarian painter who just wanted to paint? I, I I just find that hilarious and terrifying all at the same time. I don't know, did Michelangelo get into bar fights? I think it's just you. You and maybe Hitler. This is frankly more awkward he than brought that it up. Cosby gave uh, the journalist the answer, Obi Kaby, Obi Kaby, Open Lover Gibbet Baby. Show the source for that, please. Oh Kaby, oh Kaby, I need no word you maybe. Had a level, and then maybe he be cremous, menus. I may have paraphrased. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what is this framing? The man looks like a deer in headlights. Was the room too small or something? Give the guy some headroom. <laughs> what the hell? What is this angle? Did he feel the need to prove he was the one filming the documentary? Get a tripod, I need homie. I equal screen time with all the characters, okay? This is my magnum opus. How can you be sure that Christina is possessed? I can only be sure, and this is important. Read my lips on this one. I can only be sure when the funds have cleared. <laughs> okay, here it is. The main event. It's about to go down. We're about to witness for ourselves a real, once-in-a-lifetime, exorcism event. I'm ready. Let's go. Oof. I'm really looking for a way to start things off oof. without an immediate oof entering the discourse. You know, I could take a yeesh, a yikes. Hell, I'll settle for a peach sake, but don't, don't be giving me oof. <laughs> Is this Roblox? No, excuse me, aim that, please! She's the possessed one, you want her, not me! Father Amort begins every exorcism by thumbing his nose at the devil. Listen, I'm just saying, alright, if I'm the devil, I'm invisibly stalking around that room and I catch one of these going down... Are you kidding me? You think I want to stick around after something like that? I may be the king of darkness, but I'm not an idiot. In the room are Christina's family <clears throat> and other priests to assist Father Amort. And an unrelated guy who's stuck, but doesn't know how to ask to leave. <laughs> he did it, he made her sound like a Nazi zombie from Call of Duty. <laughs> This, I, I knew he would do it. I was just waiting. And he did. The best part about this is you can literally find a version for some reason of this footage with the clean, non doctored audio. I mean, the whole thing behind this production was that it was supposed to be authentic and not dramatized in any way. So, why in the hell would he do this? Oh, <laughs> I guess to make it seem more authentic? Yep. I mean, honestly, he <laughs> wanted people to believe, but then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, the undoctored footage is actually online. I guarantee you, it was just like, fuck! <laughs> just like, damn it. Excuse me, is this building in safety? Yes, Thank you, thank you very much. By the way, very fucked up whatever I saw here. <laughs> God damn. I, I, I don't really know what I was expecting. Yes, it was. Uh, really, from this. Uh, I guess this, uh, to be honest. I don't know how she sat through this nine times, okay? I'm having a hard time going on once. It's not happening, is it? It's not. They're not doing that. 
Is that happy birthday? The day of the exorcism happened to be Father Amort's 91st birthday. They are. Right after the fucking exorcism ends, I'm talking right after the exorcism ends, they have a surprise birthday party for Father Amort. No, I'm serious. That's really how it goes down. This is a documentary. They just pulled the devil out of this bitch's liver. Now they're serving ice cream cake. I don't know what to say, but I want a slice. He was happy, and so was I, because it looked like Christina was cured. Hey, okay, look, if you can't beat him, join him. I mean, who am I to stop this anyway? Father Mort seems happy, seems to know where he is, cake's good, <laughs> salute, you know? I have to say, though, I don't know how I feel about the choice of, of the cake there. That's a bit weird, a little tacky. Who's got to eat his face? <laughs> he should eat his own face. <coughs> oh, ringraziamo il Signore. What happened? Did, did, did the film freeze? Where are we going? No, I'm not going. I am not going. <laughs> Neil, what do you make of what you just see? Absolutely amazing. What the fuck? Okay, so what happens here is all of a sudden the film just stops and reverses, and now we're in some random doctor's office, and William Friedkin is just interrogating him about the footage he just shot. What did you say? There is a, you know. <laughs> there it is, right there, you see that? Right there. He gives up. That live on camera, what you've just seen is a man's soul leaving his body. Doc's like sweating, looking around. You know, he's like, this is, this is it? This is really, you didn't bring any, anyone? No crew at all? Is that Cameron? Are you real, seriously? The guy who made like the French Connection and shit? <laughs> I don't know the underlying origin of it. For God's sake, Mr. Friedkin, can you show the man some respect? He's a medical doctor. You're just lounging back there, balls out, fully spread, barely paying attention. I don't you need can to at least see that. No need is to see that. Some kind of brain disorder? Yeah, I'm starting to think it might be. Do you think she could have been better helped by brain surgery than this religious ritual? All right, Doc, that's great, yeah. but are you, let's get to the brass tacks here. What do you think of this? You think of what I'm thinking? Right in there. Just give it a little scramble. That might do something. How many surgeries have you performed? Brain surgery? Well, more, more than 5,000. Are you uh, prepared to say that there's such a thing as exorcism and demonic exactly. possession? So at this point, the film just starts jumping around and getting a bit jarring. He goes around and talks to a bunch of legitimately well-respected medical doctors from around the country, uh, shows them his uh, shitty home videotapes, and then watches them struggle while he tries to extract sound bites out of them. Here's the point. Yeah. You have to believe it in order to go through it. You probably will not have this in somebody who has no religious background. Right. I've never seen anything like that before, but I've only practiced neurology for 35 years. Mm. Did he just say what I think he did? Like that before, but I've only practiced neurology for 35 oh, okay. years. Okay, I thought he said phrenology. I was like, it, I thought maybe he was trolling, uh, trolling Friedkin there a little bit. But that's a, that is a uh, coincidental linkage between those two phenomena. Do you have any belief in exorcism as a possible treatment? What, what do you think this is? Unconscious fraud? It's yes. like placebo response. I'm right. getting you the idea right. that right. if you believe something to be likely to work, it's more likely to work. It looks like the state that we, we call delirium. It was a revelation to me that the psychiatric diagnosis of Christina's condition is recognized around the world as demonic possession. Um, no, have you like said seen that. your own documentary, dude? Like, you're not just trying to lie, right? No, you can't, because it's like in, it's like the last 15 minutes just disproved what you said. Hold on. Yeah, dude, like here it is, like the, like the last uh, 20, 25 minutes of the documentary just completely like disproved everything you just said, dude. So, unable to get the doctors to satisfy his wild theories, William Friedkin then moves on to what I assume he considers the next best thing, the Archbishop of Los Angeles which is something I just learned exists. Would you 
have any misgivings about recommending a person in extreme spiritual disease to an exorcist? What happens in the church is we have teams of people that will look in a particular case, and that team will involve usually a physician, usually a psychologist, psychiatrist, etc. Shit. <laughs> My God, Pastor, would you just save me the time? God. If I couldn't even get it from the archbishop. <laughs> no. Look at that face. That face is just like... He's like, God damn it. He's like, I just came here to try and like get some... He's like, I'm just trying to find people that legitimately believe in exorcisms to make my film seem logical. Like, Well, in truth, going to these doctors who are, you know, in terms of practicality, are like as a-religious as humanly possible. Because... I think their job, to a certain extent, requires them to be, but at the same time, you know, these men obviously don't believe. Like, and you taking that grainy footage of the doc of like the exorcism that you know, obviously, you know, you thought was irrefutable proof. I'm sorry, but that you know, it it's just not. It's not a viable thing to do. You know, you can't just expect them to be like, oh, yeah, this is real. This is, like, you can't expect them to agree with you and then, you know, because, again, William Friedkin, great filmmaker. You're showing a, a, a video of people sitting in a room and some stuff happening to, like, medical professionals, and you're like, Could you think she's possessed by the devil? And they're like, She's not even here for me to actually give like a legitimate yeah, medical no... examination or like psychological assessment to like. Yeah, there's no way because in all honesty, it's like, it's like his whole method of going about this that. is like the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like whenever he, whenever I heard like, yeah, he's going to get his exorcism and get these doctors opinions is like, oh, he can only go film it by himself with a camera. It's like I thought it was going to be like actual doctors were going to like examine and psychiatrically like assess like her situation. Yeah in addition to like the exorcism or whatever, but it's not <laughs> It's just him basically. I think we can it's see him going around harassing doctors being like, can I get you to admit that you think the exorcisms could be a real thing? And they're just kind of like, no, nah. <laughs> they were just like, uh, and I guarantee you, he presented himself. He's just like Oscar winning filmmaker wants to, wants to interview you for his project. Are you in? And I guarantee you most doctors would be like, Oh yeah. You guys like, want sure. an Oscar? Dude, ama- yeah, awesome, amazing. I, I'm then, down for that. Then it's the director of The Exorcist shows up asking you if you believe in exorcisms, and you're just like, this is not this what is, I expected. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so, again, I just, I don't know. This, to me, like, William Friedkin, what are you doing? Like, stop. Please, for the love of oh, God. He's not even good at, like, leading questions in a way that could even well, get them to, like... He's not a documentarian, dude. Maybe, I mean, like, you know, say something ambiguous enough for it to be, like, maybe they don't know, like, you know, or something. But, like, they're, they're doctors, too. Like, you're lit- you're not smart enough to outsmart, like, someone who's been to medical school on an issue that's clearly usually medically related, so... Yes. Congratulations, Doc. You <sighs> basically... Or congratulations, William. You basically, like, shot yourself in the foot multiple times trying to prove exorcisms, like, exorcisms are real. Instead, it's funny because this is one of those concepts wrong. where I was like, it, like, like you said, like, at the beginning, it's like, what could go wrong? And it's just like, that sounds kind of neat. And then I see it and I'm just like, oh, Every, Yeah, you can see why this, like, nobody saw this. Uh, a lot went wrong. <laughs> yeah, so much went wrong. Too much went wrong. I'm glad I didn't just hear about this and go to the theater and pay money to see it. I would have been pissed. I would have asked for my money back. Yeah. I, after the film was over, it's just like, my soul has literally been drained from my body. And the only way I can get it back is if you at least give me my money back please uh, give me a give me a voucher i'll watch another movie here please just i don't want to have to pay for this if i uh, and here's the thing i probably would have like, if this would have come out as part of the uh, fucking um student films that you could watch for free uh with the past you know they brought in like independent films and shit like that if it was part of that i would still want my fucking money back <laughs> God, dude. My God, Pastor, would you just save me the time? If I knew you'd be as boring as those doctors back there, I would have just followed in the footsteps of Picasso and stayed home and become a serial murderer. If I started crawling up the walls here, 
Yeah. And or moving around on the ground like a snake. Yeah. You could. Uh, you could what What would you do? I'd call That's a hypothetical. Guy. I'm dead serious, okay? I come in here. I'm pulling one of these absolute mind benders. So what do you do here? You're absolutely completely Also, I see helpless. someone's arm down what there moving the snake tail. Honestly, tell me, what the <laughs> hell are you going to do? All right, by the time, you're going to panic. And by the time the police come, I'm going to be in the underbrush. What are you going to do here? Tell me, you have very limited options. Oh and then God. suddenly, it was over. Oh, thank God. But for how long? Son of a bitch. Father Amort had taken sick and was in the hospital. But I made an appointment to meet with Christina in Rome. She called my line producer, Francesco, and rescheduled the meeting to a small town 200 miles southeast of Rome called Alatri. Where are you, she screamed. We're at the park, Francesco answered. Where are you? I'm where I told you I'd be, at Santa Maria Maggiore, the church in the town square. I didn't take my camera inside. Mmm. Hope you didn't miss anything. So this is my memory of what happened on July 4th, 2016. Well, at least you know he's not gonna exaggerate. When Francesco and I entered the church. Ah! Oh, there she is. Hi, Christina. Ah! Thanks for meeting us. No! She's great. Once you get used to the banshee scream, she's great. It was freezing cold inside, and we were trapped in a living nightmare. Christina was screaming. She slid around the floor in a cheap plastic chair, pulling her boyfriend Davide with her. That must have been a freaking scene. If only you had a camera. I bet it would have looked good on camera, too. Give us oh, yeah. back your film, he shouted at me. If you don't give it back to us, we'll kill you. We'll find your family and we'll kill you all. It was the first time anyone had threatened my life. So you better believe I was gonna make sure it'd also be the last. Yeah. I may have forgotten my camera, but I always bring something that can oh shoot. God. So the forces the of light joined to fight gun? the forces really? of evil. It was me, Boss Baby, Captain Price from Call of Duty 3, San Andreas, <laughs> Mr. Bean, Satan, and me, but I repeat myself on the last one. It's time to put the devil back into remission. Wow. Francesco and I left the church, left Alatri. For a half hour, neither of us said a word. It was awkward. Well, that really escalated, huh? I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> what do we do? Do you, you guys want to go to like a restaurant? In San Andreas, Mr. Bean. Is probably should have brought the camera, huh? <laughs> Just that face. Yeah. The Just always the, quizzical ooh. look of Mr. Bean, like. <laughs> it's gonna look. It's gonna look suspicious. I think we didn't bring the cameras. Probably, it's a pretty important thing we should have brought that to. But At least we weren't a GoPro us, right? or something. I got, I got a track record? What do you think, Arbiter from Halo 3? Oh my god. <laughs> He's right. He's usually right. <laughs> I'm not trying to brag, but you don't have many options, and I've got pretty much all the cards in this situation. I mean, you get too close, you know, I'm gonna get a little uh, venom in the fangs, and, and I'm looking at you. I'm giving you a direct look right when that's happening. That can't make you feel good. This tail of mine, what do you think that's good for? Hey, Bob left, Bob right, duck, okay, faint, who? Right jab. But the venom is the main thing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Uh... Of course, he's just like, Wow. I have an idea since all of this looks so boring so far. Let's throw in our own story at the end. And we'll just be like, we forgot the camera, but we'll tell it. And it'll scare everyone's pants off. Give us your family. Give us your family. Or we give us your uh, the footage or we will kill your family. Kind of starting to think maybe he should have just been a serial killer. No. no. Mm. 
Are you sure it wouldn't have been preferable to this being a thing? I will say this. <laughs> and this is this is take this however the fuck you want, I don't care. William Friedkin is a good filmmaker. It's just his time was up after the 70s. Sometimes great artists have a decade of creativity where they make a great film or two. For instance, Francis Ford Coppola made Godfather Part 1 and 2, Apocalypse Now, and all that, all within the span of about a decade. But, um, William Friedkin, The French Connection, and, uh, friggin', uh, The Exorcist in the 70s, and, and of course, you know, Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese, I think, is the is the outlier because he's made a great film in every decade that he's been a filmmaker. I mean, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, The Departed, Hugo. I mean, Jesus. And the 2020s are here, and he's due for a good one. So um, I'm hoping we're seeing a good one from him. But William Friedkin, I would say this is uh, an embarrassing... If this is his last film he ever touches, it is an embarrassing, like, like, ellipses at the end of an otherwise, like, pretty good film career. Especially the beginning. His opening salvo in the 70s was just amazing. But it only got worse. And I think right now, we are at the worst it could possibly be. And if he never makes another film, I'll be happy. Here, I, I honestly, I have nothing else to say about William Friedkin other than the fact that he was a great filmmaker, and now he is just a sad man still trying to uh, accrue some kind of uh, audience, and he's failing miserably. I'm sorry. I, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I don't know. I don't, I'm not really sure if he just really wants to cash in on like the thing that made him the most popular again, or if it's just that he legitimately just wishes that people would believe if exorcisms are real and just fails horribly at managing to convince anyone. <laughs> maybe it's a bit of both. I don't know. I mean, maybe he does want people to believe, but also on the same note, he is kind of cashing in on on you know his fame they're trying to he obviously didn't okay fair <laughs> the right. film only made like two thousand dollars or twenty two thousand dollars yeah it was a very minuscule amount very piss poor it basically amount. came up to like two thousand some people actually going to see it in theaters is like damn that's terrible it's the it, hey at least it's better than cuck did you hear about that one? No. Uh, Cuck was literally a film that came out, I think, two years ago, and it was trying to be like this, like hard hitting, like, like commentary on on like Trump's America and everything. Which don't get me wrong, there's issues that I have with, uh, you know, with you know America under Trump, but at the same time, it was so hyperbolic and ridiculous. It was literally it's just like this edge lord who, uh, you know. Uh, talks a big game online and, you know, he's becoming very popular online, but then they look back in his past and turns out he was an actor in a porno film. Oh, but wait, he wasn't one of the male talents, you know, like he bragged to be. No, instead, he was one of those guys who sat in the background and watched as, like, uh, his mom, like, his on-screen mom got screwed by, like, someone. Hence the term cuck. And, yeah, it was a whole thing. And you know how much money that movie made at the box office? Nobody at saw it? Nobody. Wow. No, not even an interested, like, someone who is interested. Not even an accidental walk-in. Nobody watched it. And I looked at the reviews, and the reviews were basically, like, horrible. There's, like, awful film. It's like, And I'm like, I'm glad no one saw it. The only person who has seen that is the filmmaker who made it. <laughs> That's the hilarious part of it. I'm not even going to watch that film out of curiosity just to see how bad it is. I have no interest. Jesus. 
Oh, all right. Well, the devil and Father Amorth. This was not a good film. Just watching John Tron review it is watching John Tron review multiple things is the only way I could find myself ever coming close to cert, watching certain things. I. Oh my gosh. Merry Christmas, everyone. That's all I can say at this point. Merry Christmas. I'm sorry. I I am just at a loss for words. Anything you want to add, Nick? Mm, don't get possessed. Merry Christmas, I guess. <laughs> and then the famous last words of uh of or of uh, MXC. Don't get eliminated. Yeah.